If you had to choose one footballer to take a penalty to save your life, who would you choose? Some of you might say Cristiano Ronaldo, which is not a terrible choice, seeing as he has the most penalty goals of all time and is the most experienced of any footballer ever. But even he only has an 84.5% conversion rate. Many others will probably say Lionel Messi, who has the second most penalty goals of all time and is the second most experienced player for the task. But even Messi only has a 77.8% conversion rate. But what would other professional footballers say about this question? I will go with Ronald Koeman. A surprisingly good answer as Koeman scored 111 penalties in 118 attempts, which means he was one of the best penalty shooters of all time, with a 94% conversion rate only missing seven times in his career. I would go with James Ward-Prowse. Huh? Oh, sorry? <laughs> James Ward-Prowse? Bruh. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I won't even go into detail about why that's a terrible choice. There is uh, some good ones, so I think I have to say Mario Balotelli because he was <laughs> maybe the best I've ever seen as a penalty taker. Balotelli is still a great choice as one of the best penalty takers himself, scoring 47 out of 52 with a 90% conversion rate. But what if I told you that beyond a doubt, the only correct answer for this question should be no other than this guy right here. That's right, your life would be safest betting it all on this slow and unathletic midfielder. Because Matt Letizier throughout his career would score 47 out of 48 penalties, an insane 98% conversion rate. However, this doesn't even come close to showing you just how criminally underrated one of the best midfielders in Premier League history was. Because despite the lack of strength, speed, agility, and his incredibly unassuming look, Matt Letizier was one of the most technically skilled players that English football has ever seen. So underrated in fact that as a midfielder, he would genuinely outscore some of the best strikers you could think of in the 90s to early 2000s, even setting records that had never been done before. He was genuinely so good that Southampton fans who, if you didn't know, are nicknamed the Saints because of their club's origins as a church football team would literally call him Le God. Yeah, he was so good that even his church origin club would break the first commandment to pay their respects to this legend. So today, we're gonna look at the story of Matt Letizier, one of the most underrated footballers of all time. Matt Letizier grew up in the small island of Guernsey in the British Channel, and despite being geographically closer to France, technically it's sort of its own nation. However, they're kind of governed by the British government, so yeah, it's pretty complicated. But he basically grew up in the middle of nowhere. In his own words, there was really nothing to do besides play football and cricket, and he would grow up living a carefree life in a very relaxed and safe environment where he could just focus on being a kid and doing the things he enjoyed. And his family had always loved football. In fact, he had three older brothers who were already obsessed with the sport, and as early as he can remember, he would watch and eventually join them from the moment he could walk. And in Guernsey, the chance to play football was everywhere. All the kids in town played and there were always beautiful fields with pristine grass to play in on the island. As young as he was, he would already be playing with his older brothers and their friends, helping him develop his skills incredibly early. And since he was never physically as developed as his brothers and the other older kids, he had to rely on his touch and skill rather than physical ability to keep up with them. The young Matt Letizier, without any training knowledge or coach, would even do this. I used to practice with a tennis ball, throwing the ball up against the, the side of the house, and I'd take it on my chest and I'd volley it against the side of next door's shed. And I'd spend ages doing it. So I'd take the ball on my chest and I'd test myself that it had to go in that third of the, the net or this third of the net, never down the middle. Like, it's honestly crazy for a kid to be thinking of training like that back in the early 70s. And he attributes all these factors to how he would quickly develop insanely elite aim and control at an early age. In fact, as an eight-year-old, he was already good enough to be playing under 11 competitions in Guernsey. He was just so much more skilled than everyone else. And it was at that age where he knew he had the talent to go professional. It had always been his dream to leave Guernsey and continue on to higher professional levels outside of his home. 
Just imagine if Matt Letizier never wanted to go out and see what the world had to offer. Imagine if he stayed in his hometown island. You shouldn't limit yourself to just where you live, and you certainly shouldn't limit your internet access and safety. That's why with today's sponsor, NordVPN, you can change your IP address and connect to thousands of different servers in 60 different countries, having unrestricted access to all types of different content worldwide. You can make sure you're able to watch your favorite YouTube videos, TV shows, movies, or streams safely no matter where you are in the world. Like I was just trying to watch some Bundesliga highlights about one of my favorite young players, Jamal Musiala but Bundesliga blocks their content for specific regions. However, thanks to NordVPN, I can change my IP address and watch Bundesliga videos on YouTube without any problems. Nord also keeps your IP address and other sensitive information safe wherever you are. They've even added new features that make sure you aren't downloading or visiting any malicious websites that may be tracking your IP, trying to steal your information, or trying to infect your device with malware. And right now is the best time to get NordVPN with their Black Friday deal to help you save big, plus get four or extra months for free. So click the link in my description or go to nordvpn.com slash Raymar to save big on NordVPN and get four extra months for free with their Black Friday deal. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. So finally, after spending his development years in Guernsey, Matt would fly out to the mainland at the age of 16 where he would go on trial for Southampton. He would go on to score 59 goals in his very first season for the youth team. And it was after that first year where he knew that he had the confidence to make it and that club management knew that they had someone special. Because right when he turned 18, Matt Letissier would immediately be placed on the first team where he made a total of 31 appearances in his debut season. Like how often do you see a football that young in the Premier League being so regularly featured on the starting 11. Letissier was so gifted that as a 20-year-old, he would score the fourth most goals in the league, awarding him the PFA Young Player of the Year award. Many of you can look at Matt Letissier and might be a little quick to judge by his appearance. Sure, I'll admit he does look far from intimidating, but those looks are incredibly deceiving. Because despite being slow and unathletic, Matt Letissier was one of the best midfielders the Premier League has ever seen. From his first touch all the way to his striking and finishing, Letissier was just pure class. Remember the part in the beginning when I said that he had to make up for his lack of athleticism playing against older kids with skill alone? Well, it wasn't a joke. And when you add the fact that as a kid, he was already training with tennis balls and conditioning himself to never aim in the middle of the goal, you have one of the most lethal marksmen the game has ever seen. And that is not an exaggeration. Letissier was absolutely brilliant with his shooting regardless of the distance. And this guy might not have had the most powerful shot there was, but even from ridiculous distances well beyond the box, his aim was just so brilliant. I mean, I know you see him striking all these balls and scoring them from far out and to think that maybe the keepers weren't that skilled, but the truth is the guy just knew how to put the ball behind the back of the net. And of course, with this incredible aim, Letissier was also an absolute free kick expert. The way that he only aimed for the upper or lower corners was a thing of beauty. You could never be sure that you were safe when he was taking a free kick from just outside the box. In fact, he even had this incredibly unique style of shooting in some occasions, because at times it looked like his free kicks would just cheekily chip over the line to catch everybody off guard with that unorthodox and unusual technique. There was even this one free kick where he legitimately flicks it up by himself before volleying it perfectly to the upper corner. I mean, you'd only see this kind of thing in training or at the park, but here he was doing it to the best goalkeepers in the Premier League. But that wasn't the only skill set he had, because again, despite his lack of athleticism, Letizier's first touch and dribble were phenomenal. He had incredible control and surprising touch that would catch defenders off guard time and time again for the entirety of his career. It's almost Zidane-esque to see, honestly, because when you combine this immaculate first touch and close control dribbling with just truly ridiculous shooting technique accuracy, finishing, and aim, you get goals like this, even against one of the greatest goalkeepers of all time, Peter Schmeichel. And you have to remember, he was doing this all from the midfield, regularly scoring double-digit goals and even having several 20-plus goal seasons throughout his career in the Premier League. Imagine if you added even the slightest boost of speed and athleticism on this guy. Like in the 1993-94 season, he would go on to score more goals than legends like Ian Wright and Eric Cantona, all while providing 10 assists as well. 
and more so in the following 1994-95 season, not only would he go on to score 30 goals in all competitions, but would also lead the Premier League in assists with 15 in 49 total appearances. That's a .92 goal contributions per game. If you look at season after season at the top scores in the Premier League during his career, Matt Letizier would almost always be the only midfielder among the top scorers, and on several occasions even finishing in top 5. Like it honestly surprises me how many seasons he would score more goals than even a forward legend like Eric Cantona. I mean it's honestly insane to watch a guy like Letizia doing all the things he did on the pitch despite looking unintimidating and absolutely gassed like he just ran a marathon. Because as soon as he started to attack, if you gave him enough space, he was going to score. And all these combined are the reasons why he became the first midfielder in Premier League history to ever score a hundred goals and only the sixth player to ever achieve the milestone. But of course, we can't forget about his penalty taking skills, because when going for a penalty, Letizia only had one philosophy, aim as deeply as possible for the corners. Yeah, easier said than done, but again, since his childhood, he'd always trained to aim for the corners and nothing else. So naturally, it would only translate to his penalty taking technique, because Matt Letizia would not once ever take a penalty that was off target. The only one in his career that he failed to convert was still on target. It just so happened to be saved by keeper Mark Crossley, who he himself describes as the best save of my career. In fact, it was so uncharacteristic of the cool and composed Letizia that there were even some conspiracy theories about how he was paid to throw the match. Yeah, that's how good at penalties he was. And I know there are some players who have never missed a penalty, but they simply either 1. haven't taken enough or 2. played in a much weaker league. Which is why Letizia would be my choice any day of the week to take a penalty if my life depended on it. Luckily for Southampton, Letizia was an incredibly loyal player to the club that had given him a chance since his teenage years, as he could have easily gone to a club like Manchester United and stacked up all those pieces of silverware. In fact, Chelsea even made a bid for him in 1995 during his prime for £10 million, which now doesn't sound like much, but back then would have made him the most expensive footballer in English history. In fact, Matt Letizia would single-handedly keep Southampton from relegation for his entire career. I mean, just look at how they were doing throughout the years. 16th place, 18th place, 18th place, 17th place, 16th place, 17th place. Yeah, they were an incredibly weak squad. Without him, they would have definitely gotten relegated. In fact, in the 1993-94 season, a single goal difference is what kept them from being relegated. And that just happened to be the second highest goal scoring season of Letizia's career. That is why just a couple seasons after he retired, Southampton were relegated for the first time since 1978. Ligod was truly a savior for his club. But if you really wanted to see just how underrated and overlooked Letizia was, in 1998 leading up to the World Cup, he would go on to score a hat-trick for England and would still be left out of their World Cup squad. In fact, he only had a total of 8 caps in England throughout his career. That is just incredibly sad. Until this day, the only reasonable explanation is simple favoritism or the fact that he just wasn't as respected due to his lack of athleticism and club success. I mean, if a guy like James Milner can get six times more caps as him, I genuinely don't know what to tell you. But overall, especially in hindsight, it was clear as day. Letizia was one of the best midfielders in Premier League history and was criminally underrated for how good he was. But that didn't matter because Letizia's desire and passion for football was never to win trophies. But in his words, You know, the, the winning was great, but the winning wasn't always the be all and end all to me. Um, and that's kind of what made me, I think, a little bit different. I wanted to entertain people. 